What's poppin' guys? Welcome back to my channel. As you guys can see, to the right of you is my mom. Hi! And she is back to do another cooking video with us. So on my Instagram the other day, I asked you guys what kind of videos you want to see from my mom. And a lot of you guys actually recommended pho or kadeel. So there's a difference between pho and kadeel. And my mom is going to further explain what is the difference between those two type of meals. I know um, a lot of people have actually tasted pho already in mm -hmm. uh, the Vietnamese uh, you know, restaurants. However, for us Cambodian people, we call it deal, gui deal. Now, for me, gui deal, I, I prefer the taste better than pho. Uh, the condiments, the herbs, the spices, there's more to it. I know in the pho, you, you see them putting uh, um, you know, onion, raw onion, also the Thai basil and bean sprout. We have that too, but our condiments for the ingredients that you add at the very end, when you have your bowl in front of you, all those condiments that um, they usually set aside for you at the restaurant, that's very little. That's only <laughs> half of it. The other half, there's other ingredients that you could put into your Kui mm -hmm. Now for me, a lot of my ingredients I made myself or I bought them from the store. However, you get to see that later on. I just want to let you know, Kui Tiêu is one of our favorite food, especially breakfast, mm -hmm. that's served in Cambodia. In my country, when I go to visit every time, I love going to the restaurant in the morning. Um, you can eat you know, on the curbside or in a nice fancy restaurant, or you can make them at home. Uh, Kui Tiêu is one of our popular uh, traditional dish uh, of breakfast that we eat in the morning. Okay, so for today we are going to make beef kui tiêu. Kui tiêu sạch go. Okay, and all the ingredients and I will show you how to make step by step and how to put everything together in a bowl when you are serving to someone or for yourself. So you'll get to see that later on okay thank you so much mom for explaining that to them so make sure you guys make sure you give this video a thumbs up down below and if you're not already subscribed to my channel make sure you do mm -hmm. especially giving this video a thumbs up because you know it's showing my mom that you know you enjoy having her in the video and showing you guys how to cook so i hope you guys find this video easy and enjoy. and i just want to let you know kui tiêu is one of the best food for hangover but anywho enjoy the video okay Hello everyone, so today we are going to make, I mean I'm going to show you how to make, uh, you know, uh, beef noodle soup, the broth, okay? The main thing is the broth. A lot of people know it as pho, okay? However, in our language we call it the deal, go, like the deal go. So what I have here is the linga is the same family as ginger, but it has a really clear, like it says, texture. And what I did is I cut into small pieces. This is like three small pieces of the Kalinga. I put it in my pot. Now I'm gonna put, this is an eight quart uh, pot that you could actually, you know, cook into. So hold on. So you fill up the pot up to like more than three quarters of the pot, okay? So that you leave a little bit left because you have to add the beef okay with the bones uh, carrots and the white turnip so you want to leave some you know pot for the beef so turn on the heat it will take some time to let the water boil however uh, you know according to science if you add some salt it will make the water boil faster so what I do like I said to you before I eyeballed everything with my cooking I don't use measurements so with the salt that you have, the iodine salt, put a swirl. That's it. And cover it. Here's the beef that I'm going to use. Um, this is with the bone and all that. This is about four pounds of beef with the bone. Okay. So what you need to do, you need to wash it and then cut it into small chunks so that you can put into the pot one. it's boiled. So with your beef that you got from the store, however many pounds that you want but I got about four pounds of beef with the bone with the marrow the best part is the marrow okay washing with the beef bone 
up here. And here's the beef. You want to wash it really well. Here. Okay, let me cut. Here's the beef bone with the marrow and the bone. You want to cut it into chunks, about this big. You need to cut the carrots, but before cutting it, okay, peel the skin off, you know, using your peeler. I like to use this kind because it has a ridge, like ridges around the carrot, so it looks good when you cut it, okay? Now cut the edge out, okay, get it all out, throw it in your trash. My gigantic turnip however you don't need to use the whole turnip so I'm gonna use just um, half of it with the soup okay I just use half of the turnip but before you cut them then you have to peel it peel the skin off so you want to cut into chunks okay. I love to um, add this ingredients that I bought from Northern store or Bayun store whatever store that you go to ask them for this uh, brand it's really good and I usually put it into my pot okay all the time when I am making great deal when you open it there's four cube I use all of it because my pot is pretty big too now besides the chunk of beef that you're gonna put in your stew in your broth you can have beef that are tenders and you can add this toward the very end i like to buy this here from the store and i have to cut it into very small uh, slices so that it cooks very easily because you add this to the very end here's the beef and you have to cut it really thin okay because this goes on in your bowl at the very end and this does not go inside the pot, okay? You have to cut it really, really thin. Let me show you. See how thin it is? This goes at the very end of your noodles when you are ready to eat, okay? Make sure it is sliced thinly, as, as thin as you can. Here's a very thin sliced beef. This go in your beef, I mean the deal at the very end. The meatball you can actually cut your meatball in half if you want to just like that or with the meatball some people like it they put just one side like that like that when you put it in the hot boiling pot it will be bigger of course and you could see a little of the design in there when you see the water is boiling okay then you can bring uh, your beef and with the bones and everything else put into your pot I like to put the bone in first so that the bone stay in the bottom you do not need to stir anything so here's the bone this is a uh, Gianna <laughs> it looks like a, you know the serrated uh, saw uh, on the edges you know of the you know herbs so we call it Jia now, Ji Sang Home, I believe that's what the other name mm -hmm. they call. So um, you can find this at any Asian store. And this is one of the favorite herbs that we put in our good deal. Uh, this is cilantro, another herb that you want to put. And here's my scallion that I bought the other day. Of course, you need to wash that as well. Here's my trick. I know scallions and all the herbs could go bad really, really fast, okay, if it has liquid, meaning if it's really wet. So I like to put my paper towel underneath in the bottom of this container that I'm going to keep all the scallions, uh, the garnishes together, okay. Here's my scallion. So what I do is, what I like to do is I like to cut it in half. And then really chop it really fine. Now 
now um, you're gonna have to cut the limes a lot of people they like to put their limes in their broth okay okay you want to leave the core out take the core out now with this you know cut it in chunk some people like to squeeze in their broth it's fine so you give them that option I was gonna say boys and girls <laughs> okay here's what you need to do you really need to keep a close eye on your beef okay broth what you need to do if you see the residue on the top scrape that out and you can use a spoon to do that if you want so if you ever have visited any Asians especially Cambodian or Laotian's household and you're eating Kui Tiu or Pho with the family they have other other things or herbs or spices that they have on their table for you to put these are condiments that you would like to add to your kadil, okay? A lot of the people, uh, I know for a fact, a lot of the people that I know in my culture, Cambodian especially, we love to add our ingredients. With, you know, once you have the bowl in front of you, these are the varieties of ingredients or condiments that we used, okay? Here's the, one of the ingredients that I made myself. This is the uh, chili spicy uh, pepper in oiled, okay? I also uh, included habaneros in here too. But you know, I, I made it myself. And of course, uh, I have sugar. And I have here um, the preserved vegetables. It's more like Chinese cabbage, but it's preserved, okay? And I have my roasted garlic. However, I did my garlic in oils as well. You uh, heat up the oil, put your garlic that you dice or minced together, and then voila, you got the uh, roasted garlic. And then I love this brand of chili sauce, mm -hmm. the shark brand. This is one of the best one. Um, you know, compared to this one, okay, this one tastes better. The rooster one, some people like it, but I prefer this one over the rooster one. Here's my husband's favorite and my kids too, hoisin sauce. Okay, now you have this other kind too. This other with the plastic bottle is good. However, this one is much better, thicker, and the, the in ingredients in there, meaning the flavor in there is so much better, richer. And then of course, <laughs> my other spicy chili crisp that you want to include in your, okay, your noodles. I made myself my own. However, I bought this from the store, okay? And then, we have our famous soy sauce. Now, you know, this is like already boiled for at least 40 minutes now. You could see the fattiness of the broth. Don't scoop that out. That's one of the best things about Quitiu. From all of the beef, the marrow, the bones and stuff like that. So once you scrape the residue that you did early, that I showed you earlier, the rest now is just the nice rich taste of the broth, okay? Leave it alone. So now you can add your white turnip into your soup, okay? And put it slowly so that it will not splash on you. And leave it alone, okay? You're gonna add the turnip and the carrots together. Mom, so I have a question. Yeah. When do you know when to add in the carrots and the turnips into your soup? I mean, once you have cooked about one hour already and you see that the beef has already rised up, and of course, um, you can add the vegetables in, okay? That's why it's important that you uh, watch the timer and also um, you leave some space so that when you add all your vegetable, it will rise up, of course, so you don't want to overflow it. Okay, after 15 minutes, uh, you know, once you put in your carrots and your white turnip, as you could see, see the liquid? It's really nice and clear. After this, then you can add the meatball. Slowly, of course, you don't want it to splash on you because <laughs> the hot oil, because as you could see, the oil, <clears throat> the grease, the oil, the fat, 
more like the fat from the beef has risen up to the top of the soup. I know some people they may not like the grease, the hot grease from the soup. What you need to do is um, I learned a trick from my former co-worker. He used to do uh, cook for the military, for the armies. So he said once it's like that and you don't want the grease or the fat, you can take ice cube, put it on top and then of course when it's cold, the ice is really cold, then the fat will clung to the top where the ice is and then you just scoop it out. However, I just want to let you know the best part about quick deal, okay, for the, the broth is the fattiness from the bone marrows from the beef. That's the best part. I don't usually scoop it out at all, okay? Now you're gonna let the meatball cook. Alright guys, so we're going to pause it right here. It's gonna all be in one clip, but tomorrow we're actually going to put the food out, you know, make the actual quick deal so you guys can see. Like my mom says, she likes making the broth the night before. So as y'all can see, that's it's your choice, but you know, um, we usually have it for breakfast. That's how it is when we go to Cambodia, and I'm sure every Southeast country is the Southeast same Asian. way. Southeast Asian, Asian. country mm -hmm. is the same way too. They like to have, you know, um, noodles for breakfast. So we're gonna be having it for breakfast tomorrow morning, and that's when I'm gonna show you guys the noodles, which we forgot to mention, the bean sprout, which we forgot to mention too, and other little things that we kind of forgot. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna show you the whole um, nice aesthetic of it all tomorrow inside of the bowl. How to put it together tomorrow. So I'm gonna show you that, uh, okay? If you want to eat it right away, you can but I like the beef to cook overnight. I mean, mm -hmm. you turn the, the stove off, cover it tomorrow morning, you heat everything up. Mm -hmm. So once you know that it's cooked, turn it off. Over an hour, you're done. Okay, that's it. Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, today is the day that I am going to prepare the actual gatil bowl for you okay so you, you could see what goes in it okay obviously um you should have all of the herbs okay that you prepared last night uh, with the lime and then i have my bean sprouts and i have sweet basil here and on top of that is the steak beef that i sliced uh, yesterday to let you see so you'll be needing all the ingredients all the condiments okay if you don't have all the condiments that I have here don't worry okay most Americans I noticed uh, with a lot of my American friends they they like the simple flavors from the broth the soup okay but a lot of the people who have tried and used all the di different condiments that we introduced they love to add their original flavors okay you can adjust your taste bud accordingly whether you like sweet whether you like a little bit saltier or spicier that's up to you because good deal okay it's what you are preferred to eat and what you put in it that makes it good or better okay so we're gonna do this together so let's go what you will need is the actual noodle package that you may have you could use the dry one or this brand as well so what you need to do is you get some of it because it's overboiled. Right now my mom is making a dish for my dad. Okay. And he likes to eat a lot. <laughs> put it aside. And put it in the strainer that you have. Okay? And before that, you could put your bean sprout right in the uh, bowl that you want. Okay? And then the noodles that you have in the strainer, you put in the boiling water. Okay? This water has been boiled right now. So you keep it, you know, for a few seconds, less than a minute, of course. Of course, like some people like their noodles al dente, okay, not too soft. Some people like it a little bit softer. That's up to you, okay. So since this water has been boiled, so you strain the water out, okay. Then you put your noodle right on top of the bean sprout. Then with your steak that you have, okay, since it's flatten and slice very thinly you put right in your bowl uh, believe me this the soup from the boiling hot stew that you made or broth that you made it will cook the steak very easily okay just make sure you flatten it 
okay in your bowl also guys i forgot to mention that we also have a pot just for the water so as you guys saw earlier my mom was putting the noodles inside the water mm -hmm. so it can get soft soft mm -hmm. so that's how you make the noodles you just get a pot of just water and just wait until it boils mm -hmm. now see you have a bowl of steak really laid out flat now you have the hot boiling um, broth that you made okay as you could see the meatball the turnip the white turnip and the carrot if you want to put in your bowl go ahead okay for my bowl I decided not to put any of the white turnip in my own bowl but you know in at the store at the restaurant people don't really put the white turnip inside the bowl for the customer so what you need you need your cilantro your scallion and everything that you cut before you put it in okay and then you eat of course with the chopstick make sure you go it's hot you know how i told you that with the boiling hot water with the temperature it's cooked so then you dip in your sauce okay and you eat 